You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Pahrump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello and welcome to KPVM, the Ace Country Radio Network, and thank you for tuning in. We are streaming at kpvm.tv on this Tuesday, February 6th. I'm Yunette Gentry. And in today's top story, a foot chase in Las Vegas leads to Metro Police Department's first officer-involved shooting of the year. RJ Camacho reports. Just before 2 a.m. on February 6th, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department officers were on patrol when they noticed what they described as a suspicious person. According to reports, the officers witnessed a suspicious vehicle collide with another parked car. The driver of the suspicious vehicle then exited to observe the damage. When the officer tried to stop the driver, he allegedly ran away, which caused a foot pursuit to begin. During the pursuit, the suspect allegedly pulled a gun on the officer, pointing it at them. The suspect was chased approximately a quarter mile to the 2000 block of Sherwood Street, near the intersection of Sahara Avenue. The suspect was given multiple verbal commands to drop the firearm, however they allegedly refused each time. Officers then fired at the suspect with their own firearm due to this striking them. Officers immediately attempted initial life-saving measures until medics arrived, however the suspect was pronounced dead at the scene. LVMPD Captain Joshua Martinez stated that the incident incident is currently under investigation and is the LVMPD's first officer-involved shooting of the year. No other information has been given at this time. Turning now to international news, the Israeli military plans to continue operations in northern Gaza as they plan to have full reign over the region continue. Meanwhile, Israeli protesters block aid for the people of Gaza. On February 5th, it was announced by the Israeli Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant, that Israel plans to continue to operate within northern Gaza for months until it has full reign over the entire territory. Despite Israel having reduced the presence of its troops in the north due to focusing on the south Gaza, Gallant says that the military will continue operating in the north in response to precise threats. According to Yoav Gallant, the army in northern Gaza has free reign for ground operations and they will continue in the coming months. He has also claimed that Israel has dismantled approximately three quarters of Hamas's forces. After Israel finishes focusing efforts on Khan Yunus, the Israeli defense minister has stated that the southern town of Rafah will be the last area the military will be focusing on. Rafah is the town that also borders between the Gaza Strip and Egypt, and Egypt has warned that any Israeli deployment along the border would threaten a peace treaty between the two countries that originated approximately four decades. Ago. Meanwhile, United Nations official Thomas White has accused Israel's navy of striking an aid convoy that was heading to northern Gaza carrying food. According to reports, the convoy was waiting to move into northern Gaza when it was hit by naval gunfire, which Thomas White alleges was from Israel's navy. Juliet Toma, who is the head of communication for the UNRWA, reported that there were no injuries from the strike. Relating to the UNRWA, Spain's foreign minister Jose Manuel Alvarez has stated that Spain's government will be spending $3.8 million in order to keep the UNRWA afloat in the short term. This comes as multiple countries have suspended funding for the UNRWA after allegations came out that 12 of its employees were involved in Hamas's October 7th attack on southern Israel. However, the UNRWA Commissioner General Felipe Lazzarini expressed concerns that the agency would shut down by the end of the month due to the lack of funding. This would have been of great concern, not only to the agency, but to the people of Gaza, as the UNRWA is the main humanitarian aid group in Gaza that serve its approximate 2.3 million people. Thanks to funding from Spain, however, the UNRWA will be able to continue aiding civilians in Gaza as the investigation is ongoing. Lastly, on February 6th, 
Israeli protesters blocked humanitarian aid that was meant for Gaza, despite the fact that Israel had declared the area a closed zone. This is not the first time Israeli protesters blocked humanitarian aid for Gaza, and Israel declared the area a closed zone to prevent it from happening again. According to reports, the protesters believe that no additional aid should enter Gaza until the over 100 remaining hostages are released by Hamas. Additionally, they also believe that the aid should be used as leverage for negotiations. According to aid groups, even when the crossing is fully operational, the amount of aid coming in is insufficient for the humanitarian crisis that has been caused by nearly four months of war. According to UN officials, one in four Palestinians in Gaza are starving due to the lack of food. It is primary election day here in Nevada, and the presidential preference primary voting is currently underway. Polls opened at 7 this morning and will close at 7 p.m. tonight at two area locations here in Pahrump. News 25 is speaking with Nye County Clerk Mark Kampf, who's giving us details. Yeah, we're here at Great Basin College for election day. Uh, we've set up a second polling location for the voters in Nye County. Not a big turnout today here at Great Basin, but just want to get the message out that if you don't want to be standing in line during the primary or in the general election, and you live south of 372, it might be closer to go to Great Basin and avoid the lines. Shouldn't be anybody standing out in the rain uh, this year or any time this year as the way we've set up uh, uh, Bob Rood and the Great Basin so that uh, you're standing inside waiting in line rather than outside. I think that'll help the voters and I wouldn't want to be standing in the rain for two hours either. So we've made a change and hopefully that helps. Uh, Bob Rood has seen about 125 voters show up by noon. A lot lighter voting than you would expect in an election, but uh, this is a new thing for the voters in this county and, uh, and in the state. And so uh, people get more adjusted to it in the future. Uh, so not a very big turnout today, but the rain may have been keeping people home, but that's no reason to come, not, not come out to vote. The polls will be closing at 7 as an election day. They're always open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have polls open in Round Mountain, Tonopah, Amargosa, Beatty, and two polling locations here. We also have a polling location at the Yamba Indian Reservation, way up uh, just south of Austin. And so uh, we make sure that we bring voting to all of our citizens. At Duckwater, in that reservation, they decided to use a drop box for this election. So uh, we provided that for them at their request. But we cover all the citizens in this county, no matter how far away they are. And thanks to all of the voters who are braving this wet weather out there and the effects of the atmospheric river, because much of Southern Nevada is currently under a flood watch. Mikey Ruhan has information. A flood watch has been issued February 6th at 10.46 a.m. until February 6th at 4 p.m. Posted by National Weather Service, Las Vegas, Nevada. Flash flooding caused by excessive rainfall continues to be possible. Portions of southeast California, including following areas eastern Mojave Desert, Morongo Basin, and western Mojave Desert, and southern Nevada, including the following area, western Clark and southern Nye County. Excessive runoff may result in flooding of rivers, creeks, streams, and other low-lying and flood-prone locations. Low water crossing may be flooded. Scattered showers and possibly a thunderstorm will develop during the day. Scattered showers and possibly a thunderstorm will develop during the day. The ground is already soaked from earlier rain, so additional rain could cause flooding. Remember to be safe, turn around, don't drown. Again, be careful out there on our roadways. If you see standing water, do not drive through. Turn around. Don't drown. News 25 will be right back. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, local law enforcement arrest a man after reports of domestic disputes. 
On February 4th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to the Schultz Trailer Park in Beatty in reference to an alleged domestic. Upon arrival, officers met with the victim, who stated that she and Justin Clark were verbally arguing at her apartment. The victim then went to her car and attempted to call 911. However, Justin allegedly jumped through her car door window in order to prevent her from calling law enforcement. According to the arrest report, Justin was forcibly grabbing the phone from her when a nearby handyman intervened by grabbing Justin and pulling him away from the car. The reporting party then fled to her mother's home at Schultz Trailer Park. Officers then attempted to locate Justin at the alleged victim's apartment, and while searching the apartment, Justin was found laying on the floor, sleeping, after officers found a back window broken, according to the arrest report. Justin Clark was then arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center under the charges of home invasion, intercepting, interrupting, or delaying a message via phone line and domestic battery. In more political news, Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen announces support for a supplemental border security package in response to the ongoing crisis at our southern border. On February 5th, Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen announced her support for a bipartisan Senate border security deal and called for it to be passed swiftly. This border security supplemental package is reported to make historic investments in border security, which includes funding for new security, hiring more border patrol agents, screening technology, and increasing resources for customs and border protection officers. This bill also requires that the president sanction drug cartels responsible for the fentanyl crisis and declare that fentanyl is a national emergency, which would allow new federal support on the matter. This legislation also would make important reforms that help vulnerable migrants and improve visa-based immigration. Specifically, this legislation would create an additional 250,000 family and employment-based visas to help address a long-standing backlog. This would additionally allow asylum seekers that pass a screening process to immediately receive work authorization organizations, while their claims is under review, provide legal counsel free of charge for unaccompanied arrivals under the age of 13, and protect children of individuals on work visas from aging out of the green card line when they turn 21. Lastly, the overall package includes support for American allies, such as Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, along with humanitarian aid for civilians in Gaza. This would also support the nonprofit Security Grant Program. Senator Jackie Rosen went on to state, that the situation at our southern border is nothing short of a crisis. Law enforcement is overwhelmed by the unprecedented surge of migrant crossings, and communities across Nevada and the nation are being overwhelmed by the flow of deadly drugs like fentanyl. It's past time we take common sense steps to secure the border and keep fentanyl from getting into our country. Rest in peace country to singer Toby local Keith died Monday and at the national age of 62 country after a battle singing with legend. Toby Keith, who passed away Monday night at the age of 62 after a battle with stomach cancer. And to honor Keith, you can stay tuned to KPVM, where we will be playing hits from Keith back to back on Ace Country Radio. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. Well, Valley Electric Association has some resources available for low-income members to help them pay their utility costs. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. Valley Electric Association has several resources available to help you with your electric and broadband bills. These community partners offer assistance in various ways. 
Remember, if you're behind on your bill, you can call Valley Electric Association to ask about making payment arrangements. You have the, the regular state aid, which is the, the LAHIA. Um, that's an application that we have the applications here in the office that we can give to members. And then you can either mail or fax those into the state offices, um, one's in Vegas and one's um, up in Reno. Nevada Outreach and Training Organization has several programs that can benefit members of the community by connecting them with various resources to help pay their bill. For more information, call 775-751-1118. They have services that they can generally help with in that gap period um, to help quickly if need be, usually within a couple of days. Nye County Health and Human Services offers services to help members based on eligibility requirements and you can call them at 775-751-7095. Rural Nevada Development Corporation offers a wide variety of options including free home weatherization and you can contact them by calling 866-404-5204 or find them on the web at rndcnv.org. Nye Communities Coalition advocates for the needs of the community and offers various resources, including job placement, education, and senior services. The Affordable Connectivity Program is a federal benefit that helps households with the cost of home internet services, which can reduce your internet bill by $30 per month. For more information, go to VEA's website under Broadband Payment Assistance to fill out an application. Sign up for budget billing with Valley Electric Association, which can help stabilize your monthly payments by averaging 12 months of usage helping reduce high monthly bills. Signing up for Smart Hub can help you manage your account and usage and sign up for Beat the Peak Alerts. The Co-op Connections Card is a national and local discount program which includes prescriptions, travel, and more. Please contact Valley Electric Association to find out more at 775-727-5312 or go to vea.coop. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Let's take a look through our pinion cam at the snow coming down. And there's also heavy rain coming down in the area. Be careful out there on our roadways and we'll take a closer look at the precipitation and what else is coming in weather after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Good evening, Nevada. I'm Roy Rosell here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv. Taking a look at Nevada right now, Fernley is at 44 degrees, Fallon is at 45, Carson City is at 39 degrees, Tonopah, surprisingly the lowest in the state, at 34 degrees, Goldfield is at 35, Beatty at 42, Amargosa at 48, and Las Vegas at 47. Death Valley is at 56 degrees, too. Here in the Paradise of Prump, it is currently 47 degrees, and the high today was, well, right now at 47 degrees. Humidity today was 85%, and sun rose this morning at 6.40 this morning and set at 5.15 p.m. The low tonight is 41 degrees, and the humidity rises up to 88%. Taking a look at the seven-day forecast... We're going to still have some severe rainstorms until Thursday of this week, and then Friday it eases up, and it looks like there's not going to be any rain, just partly cloudy. On Saturday, it goes back into the 50s, and it looks like it's going to be sunny through the rest of next week. I hope everybody is staying safe and dry out there. Back to the desk. Here's Unet. Thanks so much, Rory. And that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Unet Gentry, and from all of us here at KPVM and Ace Country Radio, our condolences go out again to Toby Keith and his family and loved ones and fans, and we leave you with this tonight.
country singer Toby Keith died Monday at the age of 62 after a battle with stomach cancer. A statement posted to Keith's website and social media said, Toby Keith passed peacefully last night on February 5th, surrounded by his family. He fought his fight with grace and courage. Please respect the privacy of his family at this time. Keith revealed his stomach cancer diagnosis in 2022. He said, I've spent the last months receiving chemo, radiation, and surgery. So far, so good. I need time to breathe, recover, and relax. He said in a statement at the time, I am looking forward to spending time with my family, but I will see the fans sooner than later. He continued performing recently, playing shows in Las Vegas. Earlier this month, he posted a video offering advice to other songwriters. Just toil away every day. Keith said most of his catalog was created while he was writing at least four to five days a week. You gotta have volume, you gotta have practice, and you gotta keep your chops up. And you gotta stay in the middle of your game, he said. Keith performed at the 2023 People's Choice Country Awards in September and received the Country Icon Award. He released his debut album in 1993 and is known for his hits including Red Solo Cup and I Wanna Talk About Me. His 2002 song, courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, released in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks, made him a household name. Keith performed hundreds of shows for U.S. service members abroad, including Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as at events for Presidents Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and George W. Bush. He sometimes gifted wounded veterans with wheelchairs at his concerts. Toby Keith leaves behind his wife Trisha and three children, Shelley, Crystal, and Stellan.